Good evening. My name is Brandon Monk. I'm the chair of the Frederick County School Board, and it is 5.30 on Wednesday, May the 11th. I'll go ahead and call our special meeting to order. Please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. Next, we'll have a salute to our flag. Please join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, next we have a uh, lengthy agenda before us. So do we have a uh, motion to approve the agenda as presented? Motion to approve the agenda, Mr. Chairman. All right, is there a second? Second. All right, any discussion on the agenda? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor of approval, approval of the agenda as presented, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, we have an agenda. Seeing that there's no unfinished business, we can move on to new business. Finance Committee report, Mr. Hester. Yes. The Finance Committee uh, met at the Frederick County Public Schools Administration Building on May 10th. The meeting was called to order at 4.30 and a copy of the minutes has been provided to each board member. During the meeting, Mrs. Camry reviewed a recommendation to award a contract for HVAC improvements at NREP at Cincinnati Road School and stated coronavirus funds will be used for the project. Dr. Savine updated the committee on work being done to identify and bring forward a recommendation for a meaningful bonus for all employees prior to the end of fiscal year 2022. He also highlighted the possibility of having funds available to support a paid differential for special education teachers, speech therapists, special education instructional assistants, behavioral specialists, and behavioral behavior instructional in assistance depending upon the av the availability of state funds. Mrs. Camry reviewed the appropriation approved by Frederick County uh, Board of Supervisors on May 4th and the priority of projects which are to be completed through the capital projects fund depending on the amount of state funds made available. No local funds were appropriated for the capital projects fund in FY23. The meeting adjourned at 521. Additional details regarding the information covered at the committee meeting are included in the minutes provided to board members. Are there any questions from board members about information shared at the finance committee meeting held on May 10th? We did have two action items come out of the committee meeting. First, recommend awarding a contract valued at $2,298,000 to Paramount Mechanical Corporation as a result of IFB 22006, NREP HVAC improvements. Second. All right, a motion that has been made and properly seconded to award a contract in the amount of $2.298 million to Paramount Mechanical Corporation as a result of IFB 22006 HVAC improvements. Discussion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, just to say, uh, amount this uh, size, uh, call, uh, request a roll call. Okay, great. Further questions? I heard Ms. Martin ask a quick question, uh, lean over and ask about uh, where Paramount Mechanical Corp is located. Do we know where they're based out of? Manassas. Okay. Further questions? All right. Seeing none, we'll proceed to a vote. We'll do a roll call vote. Um, Mr. Lake? Aye. Ms. White? Aye. Ms. Martin? Aye. Mr. Comstock? Aye. Mr. Hester? Aye. Mr. Atkins? Aye. The chair votes aye and the has been awarded. Second action item, recommend approval of the minutes from the Finance Committee meeting held on May 10th, 2022. Second. All right, we have a motion that's been made and properly seconded to approve the Finance Committee meeting minutes. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of approving the minutes, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, those minutes pass as well. Okay. I will go on and make a motion to adopt FY23 budget. 
I move to adopt the FY23 budget totaling $267,697,988, which includes a school operating fund of two. Two hundred and seventeen million four hundred eighty four thousand four hundred forty four dollars with fifty five new full time equivalent positions debt service fund of eighteen million six hundred sixty eight thousand six hundred twenty three dollars capital projects fund of seven million two hundred eighty nine thousand three hundred ninety two dollars school school nutrition services fund of ten million fifty nine thousand five hundred twenty nine dollars school textbook fund of three million eighty four thousand seven hundred seventy seven dollars in rep operating fund of six million four hundred sixteen thousand two hundred twenty three dollars with three new full-time equivalent positions in rep textbook fund of twenty thousand dollars Consolidated Services Fund of $4 million, and Private Purpose Fund of $675,000. The School Construction Fund is approved as a carry forward in the amount that equals the approved original project cost, less, less expenditures and encumbrances through June 30, 2022. The School Health Insurance Fund and Special Grants Fund are approved for amounts based on cash balances as of June 30, 2022, plus receipts during the fiscal year. All outstanding encumbrances at June 30, 2022 are carried forward and are automatically approved for the 2023 fiscal year. All right, thank you, Mr. Hester. Do we have a second to his motion? Second. All right, any discussion? What does NREP textbook mean? The That's a North, Northern, Northwestern Regional Education. Education Program. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't know if this was on. Am I? Is it coming through? Or? It is. And you're talking about the textbook fund. Is that, so it's specifically dedicated for the NREP program. Those textbook dollars can only go to to that. To that. Mm -hmm. I got that. Additional, uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Lake. So uh, we have a motion to adopt the the uh, budget. Uh, could we just have a couple of words, Dr. Savine, uh, about the fact that um, state has not landed, and we may or may not have some adjustments, and so uh, where would we be in that regard? Yeah, Mr. Lake, Mr. Chairman, uh, as discussed in the Finance Committee meeting yesterday, um, uh, and as you just referenced, the, the state has not uh, approved a budget to date. Um, we are uh, anticipating, um, you know, some funds as is referenced regarding capital projects. Um, right now, uh, it could be in the amount of $5 million or perhaps less. Uh, also, um, one of the items that we discussed uh, was um, the Senate version, mm -hmm. which... Um, specifically designates um, dollars that uh, should be used for a, a bonus and we'd reference it's in the amount similar to uh, what the school board has approved and proposed regarding the pay differential for our special education initiative. So uh, it was recommended that uh, that would be a target of for one-time dollars, not uh, continuing dollars, but it would be uh, one-time funds uh, from a bonus standpoint, in the event um, the state landed uh, close to the Senate version, uh, we recognize that it, there will likely be some compromise and there may be less dollars uh, from state level. Uh, certainly we would, we would uh, come back at that point and make any, any adjustments if it's necessary to reduce uh, the bonus regarding the pay differential for special education teachers. But I'll just mention that based on um, the board's previous action, uh, the uh, the salary initiative would be uh, five percent across the board for all employees, uh, as was referenced and as was uh, directed by um, this board in in April. Uh, Where I'm currently working with our team uh, to identify in our current uh, budget FY22 uh, funds to do a meaningful. Um, bonus. Uh, our target would be 3000 um, to match what is similar to the county government. So just for clarity's sake, um, right now with the FY23 budget, 
a what the board has previously approved was a 5% salary increase for all employees. Uh, and we are currently working uh, and anticipate um, by um, uh, uh, the next meeting in June, we will uh, have a, a bonus for uh, all full-time employees for for this year utilizing FY22 funds. Once again, the, the goal is to uh, uh, target um, possibly $3,000 for a bonus. So what I've referenced, and to your point, uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Lake, regarding the um, state funds, um, if it remains uh, at the state level, a target amount and the amount of $2 million um, that would capture those dollars that um, the board initially uh, proposed would be ongoing as a part of the operating. Um, uh, but this, this would allow you to be in a position to, to at least address an additional bonus for uh, special education uh, teachers and instructional aides, um, similar to what was proposed. Because you may recall, uh, I believe we you target about 1.8 million for the um, special ed pay differential. So if, if the state lands anywhere close to what the st uh, Senate has <clears throat> proposed, that would put you in a position to do a one-time salary bonus for uh, the targeting the special education. But that really depends on state action. I'll yield to Mrs. Camry and Mrs. Anderson to add any additional uh, points for clarity just for the board's benefit. Yeah, I, I don't think we need to add anything, Dr. Savine. I think you pretty well covered it. We're hoping the state lands it by the end of this month, and maybe we'll know what those dollars are by then. So the um, so really our purpose here is so that the school division can move forward with you know an improved budget and then do its business of of you know, securing contracts and, and going forward into next year. And then down the road, a couple of weeks, a month or whatever, we'll make adjustments as needed. But isn't the purpose of this just so that we can get, you know, the next step going? Yeah, um, tonight's purpose is to do just that so we can get the contracts out. Uh, we're hoping, as we talked about in finance, maybe by the end of this month, knowing where the state landed. If so, if there's additional recurring dollars, then we'll ask you to come back through finance and the board to then maybe reappropriate if you decide to put that toward the differential, if those recurring dollars come. And at that point, we will reissue contracts to those teachers that it affects or any other staff that it may affect. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Other discussion? Mr. Comstock. Um, just two points to bring up. Dr. Savine, piggybacking on what he was referencing with the 5% salary initiative, just for clarification, that's also at 7.5% for nurses, correct, Dr. Savine? Yes, sir. And then, Mrs. Camry, um, in regards to the potential um, adjustment and looking for funds to do this as an, uh, a bonus rather than as a salary initiative for our special education folks, I don't know if you have or, or haven't, but would the cost probably be a little bit different since it would be a one-time bonus rather than something that would have benefits attached with it? Okay. Yes. And you, you don't happen to know what that figure is, do you? Uh, to do a, a bonus versus the bon doing the, the, the increase? The same amount just as a one-time bonus. Uh, no, not with me. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. I think at one point I'd ask that, so I'd venture to say it's somewhere in here. I think you all provided an answer. I don't know if it was on the Probably. 7 or the 6 or at what point, but... Um, I remember it was a, a little bit less. So. Other discussion? I think the only other thing, Mr. Chairman, sorry, jumping back in, is that um, I'm appreciative that we're finally in a position where we can move forward. Our people need that. They need the certainty of contracts. They need to know what they're looking at for next year. So I'm appreciative that we're in that position, although it's not what we'd like for it to be or what we truly need for it to be. Um, I am appreciative that we're able to do the 5%. I think that's meaningful. And um, hopefully, we'll also be able to do the $3,000 meaningful bonus and something for our special education folks um, and know that this board is committed to continuing to work towards those things for our people. We value our people, and, um, and we're, we're really trying to get that for you. So um, that's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any other discussion? 
I'll just share, I echo uh, your last sen sentiment there, Mr. Comstock, really appreciate being able to move forward, have a budget here, um, really appreciate and support the 5% for our teachers and the 75 for nurses. I did, and also pre appreciate Ms. Camry and Ms. Anderson, Dr. Savine, uh, over the past couple of days answering some questions that I had about um, special needs teachers and how we might be able to get them that bonus. I think I have a little bit different opinion about trying to move forward now as our teachers are kind of making decisions now um, around that space. So it looks like from some of the numbers we received yesterday during our conversation, there was kind of about 600,000 left from the Millbrook roof. I know that those numbers are fluctuating. Um, and if we were to do kind of a meaningful bonus to special educators now, kind of the special ed uh, resource folks, the assistants, the behavior specialists, all of those folks, and did half of that, looks like it'd be about a million dollars. So if we took out that Millbrook of 600,000, um, that would leave us about 400,000 to work with. I looked at James Wood Middle School's stadium bleachers um, and saw that that was one that Mr. Crispin left on there. Mr. Bach, can you speak to what that upgrade might look like? It, it sounds like it's gonna be a complete uh, overhaul of those bleachers it, it comparative to now. <clears throat> it would be, the bleachers are in pretty rough shape. They're very old. I think they're the original bleachers there. So it would be a complete upgrade. Yeah, it's just concrete, right? Correct. Correct. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, so it would be my recommendation that either that or an adjustment, if we did that same adjustment uh, to, from 5% to 3% for admin, that would cover those things. Or if we used um, some about $300,000, $400,000 out of ESSER, that would cover those um, significant pay increases now. I know we haven't got confirmation from VDOE yet that we can do that one time um, bonus, but I think that would alleviate some of the questioning that folks may have. Ms. Camry, I see you're wanting to chat a little bit. Sorry, I did want to interrupt. No, you're fine. Uh, the funds that are from the state that are in capital projects are, can only be spent on capital projects. Okay. So that was the criteria with those state dollars of the 5.3. Okay. So you're, and so yeah, they're, they're not recurring dollars. Okay, well. so let's say uh, I'll, I'll put forward a motion then to um, adjust our budget, just the amendment that Mr. Hester provided by using um, ESSER dollars to provide a one-time bonus for those folks listed in the original um, category of our budget at half of that, so $3,000, 1500 500 so on, um, utilizing ESSER dollars. Second. Is there any discussion? We have a motion and a second for the amendment to Mr. Hester's original motion. Mr. Chairman, I don't think that we have verification that we can use ESSER funds in that way yet. Is that accurate, Mrs. Cameron? Um, we, what we have been told is that we would need to make the amendment to the application and then receive approval at that point in time. Would that be a guaranteed approval, or would, is that something we would need to work uh, We would first? have to have, um, in order to have the state approve it, we would have to have a plan in place, meaning they want to see exactly how it was determined, who got what, but who's in and who's out. that would be an use for those funds? Yes, we could do that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Comstock. Other discussion? I think it's just a preference of kind of when, it sounds like, and I'm just worried that if the Senate doesn't come through, then um, we may leave some of those folks there, and I think we have the dollars to be able to fund it now. So. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. I'd, Atkins, I'd, so this would, you know, definitely help ensure that uh, those bonuses to go to those teachers and, the, and special needs uh, teachers as well. Is, is that kind of where we're going with that? It, it's it's something where we're not just leaving it up in limbo. We're actually, you know, taking that money and putting it to use for our teachers. Correct. Yep. All right. I guess, Mr. Chairman, in my mind, we're. We're working towards a meaningful bonus for all of our staff, and I, just to be frank, I don't think that the $3,000 and $1,500 one time is enough for our special education folks. Sorry, I almost flubbed that up, didn't I? Um, for our special education folks. So um, I'm more of the mindset that we should wait and see what happens with this state and just reassure our people that, hey, we're working on this. And um, if the funds don't come through from the state, we're going to be having some different conversations, I think, to, to try to find a way to make those happen. But um, I think it's a little bit premature to, to jump on that right now. Appreciate that, Mr. Comstock. Any other discussions? Mr. Monk, Mr. Hester. We did have a healthy conversation about this at the finance meeting yesterday. And our capital projects are 21, you can correct me if I'm wrong, $21 million behind. 
and you know for us to use these ESSER funds to really tap into that because of not having the local um, funds available um, just makes sense. I mean we have so much going on um, and we I mean our special education departments already know that we're working to get them a meaningful bonus. Um, there's additional funds at yesterday. If everything comes through, it'd be roughly $9,000 on top of the 5% increase um, that they would be receiving. Um, and we just need to get some capital improvements taken care of. And um, it just sounds a lot like the misunderstanding downtown has. Your, your motion has a lot of misunderstanding like downtown has in regards to the ESSER funds. So we, we need to, you know, I'm just baffled why we're here at the last minute, you know, where we've been working on this for months trying to to change things up. So um, I'm with Mr. Comstock in that I, I will not approve that motion. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Atkins. So, you know, it, it, to me, it, it goes back to for years, these teachers have been promised a step increase and, you know, it, it's gone by the wayside. And now we're promising to do something to help them out and retain them but it sounds like it's coming from you know it's hollow words i'd rather see this motion put into action that way we can ensure teacher retention in our county mr, mr. chairman if uh, i may dr savine I just want to speak to the step um uh and i'll i'll yield to mrs camry uh because Mrs. Camry and, and uh, Mrs. Rideholm have worked hard with our, our staff and our teachers to provide meaningful step increase as this board has. So just for clarity's sake for, for, for the full board, I want Mrs. Camry to speak to uh, the 5% increase in the step and, and also um, the fact that we've had multiple years where we have provided uh, steps to our teachers now. It, it is, um, people may recall that, uh, you know, with the great reception, recession, that there were uh, groupings, but uh, all of our teachers and employees have received a, a step increase. Um, yeah, we, um, I'm sorry, Ms. Wrightholm, I guess I should have looked over there to make sure. Uh, I know that Mr. Bach and Dr. Angelo like for you to, to speak first, but not them. But um, we, we have been doing uh, pay, pay raises. The only time we didn't, we were trying to set three years ago, no one got a pay raise. No one. Um, but other years, they've all gotten pay raises. So even if there wasn't enough money to do a step, they got enhancements. Uh, so they still got raises. So I'm not sure where the statement's coming from. So talking to some of the teachers in the county and stuff, they've came back to me and and I I know uh Mr. Comstock and I've had this conversation before where they've um you know said hey you know we were promised this step and didn't get it or it wasn't funded all the way to where it was supposed to be and hey we'll get you next time that's kind of the attitude that's been coming from the Yeah we focused uh, almost on our teachers the, definitely the last 2 years uh, all the money's gone there I I do think and we've always said this and we don't know how to correct it is that Teachers don't understand the step and their salary scale sometimes um, because it is complicated. Okay. So it's Maybe not a, it's might not a slight to them. It's very yeah. complicated. And I'll just add that in uh, this current year, actually last year's budget cycle, it was a historic year in terms of uh, teacher salary increases. I believe that Six, that was in the uh, area of 6.4, and that was uh, historic from a Frederick County standpoint. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Comstock. Um, I think the conversation that we might be reminiscing on is one that Mrs. Camry knows is near and dear to my heart, <laughs> just how some of our steps are so doubled up. Yeah. That's something I definitely, yeah. you know, know that we need to work on. But I, 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 you know, I think we're on the right track with at least providing this 5% to our people. So, mm -hmm. um, and hopefully more for our special ed folks. Yep. No, Ms. Ms. White. So I just want to take a moment to highlight that the FY 2023 school board budget proposal in that initial proposal, which was voted and passed by this board almost unanimously, that we do have in here a new pay scale for special, special education teachers, mm -hmm. a new pay scale for speech therapists, new pay scale for special education instructional assistants, a new pay scale for behavioral specialists, new pay scale for behavioral instructional assistants, 
and add um, sub supplement pay to instructional assistants with a degree to include the grow your own grow your own FCPS graduate incentive. This was denied by the funding body. This was not denied by us. So I think that that's important to remember that almost unanimously we voted for this for our teachers, for our special education teachers. I think that's important to keep in perspective. Thank you, Anita, for the discussion. I'll share, Ms. White, I guess that's you know why I'm wanting to push this forward and use the ESSER funds that we have within our purview to use to help push them. Um, Mr. Hester, you mentioned a behind schedule of 21, I think it's $21.7 million of asset replacement. I think everyone knows, uh, based upon my belief of um, you know, working on that, that I'm in support of that. Just last year, it looks like we were at 33.9, and the other uh, number for the year prior was on the website. So I think we've made some good progress there, getting that down from nearly 34 to 22 million. So uh, thankful for that. I know a lot of that is, is in part uh, due to ESSER dollars, and so um, appreciate those, I guess. And uh, we'll be spending a lot on HVAC, I think, in the next 20 or 30 years, whenever the, the life of those systems goes down. Any other discussion on the amendment before we go to a vote? Would you please repeat exactly what we're voting on? Sure. So we would take the, Mrs. White just read uh, carefully. Appreciate that. The um, pay scale initiatives of special education, the assistance, the uh, behavior specialists, et cetera. What I'm proposing is that we would um, cut, move those to half. So instead of 6,000 that was approved by the board, 3,000, 1,500, et cetera. Um, that would give us about a million dollars in expenses um, that we would then use ESSER dollars to cover. Um, and we have any questions on the amendment? <coughs> Uh, if if the funds come through the government that we're all waiting for, then would these be put back into place, the 6,000, the so forth and so on? And it, rather, okay. Uh, Dr. Savai and Ms. White asked if the funds, I um, believe she's referencing the Senate version, or Ms. Martin, excuse me, I believe she's referencing the Senate version, if that were to come to fruition. She was asking if uh, would they be placed with the six thousand? I guess the pay well, scale. Well, the first one is like six thousand and was reduced to three thousand, so it's going to be bumped back up to. My the, understanding is that would be a one-time, uh, as opposed to a pay scale adjustment. It would just be a one-time bonus. If it, that that if we have the money, we're going to bump it up. In terms of the question pertaining to the state, I'll say that depends. Right now, uh, what was referenced is based on uh, the Senate version that designates. Um, uh, specifically right around for our local uh, two million dollars to be specifically used for um, uh, a bonus uh, if that remains um, then uh, what was discussed I believe with the initial or the main motion was to use those funds to fully um, fund the special education um, differential and that would be one time dollars okay. in the form of a bonus. So it'll now, be I believe up if, if we get the money. If we get the money, it'll be put back to the original on this sheet. Instead of 3,000, it'll be 6,000. Mm -hmm. And for speech therapists, instead of 6,000, that 3,000, it'll be, go back up to 6,000. Yeah. If what you're saying happens, if it doesn't. If, if this funding comes through the state at the um, current level, as discussed at the Senate level, uh, it would allow for $6,000 bonus for uh, all full-time teachers and around 3000 for the instructional assistance. Okay. Uh, if that happened to be reduced, uh, say from $2 million to one point five, then uh, it would just be reduced in terms of the bonus. But it is a significant bonus uh, of, of $6,000 on top of what we've discussed with the FY22 uh, bonus of tar targeting $3,000. So know, all in all, with the... With this all I'm asking is, will it happen? If, if you get the money, then you're going to put this back up to 6000 That is a decision of this board. Okay. All right. Mr. Monk, did you, Mr. Lake. Did you reference um, the uh, long ago we talked about administrative pay? 
Did you just reference that in your amendment? I said there's kind of three different options, not in the amendment. Um, okay. That was one. I didn't choose to go with that option. Okay. All right, let's vote on the amendment that is before us, which is to um, provide uh, bonuses for special education folks as well as behavior specialists, et cetera, in half the amount that um, the board had approved, uh, utilizing ESSER dollars. All in, um, all in, and this would be a one-time bonus. All in favor signify by, uh, or let's do a roll call, but Mr. Lake? No. Ms. White? No. Ms. Martin? No. Mr. Comstock? No. Mr. Atkins? Yes. Mr. Hester? No. The chair votes aye, the amendment fails. All right, we have before us the uh, main motion, which to, was to approve the budget that was presented um, by Mr. Hester. Any further discussion on that? All right, we'll do a roll call vote on that. Can I change my vote? Nope. Okay, I think I misunderstood. There's been so much talk about this budget for the past, what, three months. One thing I don't understand is why we keep picking on special needs and putting it aside. Why is it not all teachers? Yep, so I think it's just a, you know, we've talked about the high need area and the position that is there and it's hard to fill some of those. So I think that's one of the rationale that was provided by mm -hmm. staff. And I know that's kind of my intent was to make sure that those so, positions which so, have a high workload. So there's nothing wrong with, the only thing that I don't like about this is that I want to make sure that if you, if you say yes to this and we get the money that these teachers do get, the rest of that money that is apportioned here that has been marked off. Right, understood. Mr. Lake. Uh, yes, um, as, as Dr. Savine said, um, if the state does a certain action one way or another, that action comes back to our board. I understand. And then we vote on that accordingly. Uh -huh. At that point, if we wanted to address uh, a certain salary range, a certain salary scale, or a certain category, we could do so at that time. But without assurance from the state that that's coming, to quite frankly be, uh, you know, considering that tonight is, is premature. But we always have the, we always have in front of us action to react to whatever the state may be. So it could be a future act. We could take that vote in a month if we get the word, okay? Mr. Clark, uh, Ms. Martin, you still wishing to change votes or? Yeah. Because this needs to just be passed and go uh, on. I don't believe you can do that, Mr. No. Chairman. I don't think I can. Any. I'm, I'm happy to yeah. note in the minutes that after the vote was taken, she expressed the desire to change her vote. If that okay, would, that's I'd fine. I'd like to have that in the record, but um, it, it also Because it's not done yet anyway. Vote, as you know. I believe if, if you'd really desire, we could, you as being on the uh, prevailing side could move to reconsider, then we could have a vote on that, but it's kind of your preference if, if you'd like to do that. Um, it sounds like I don't think it would, would change the outcome. So you would, you'd have to move to reconsider, reconsider would have to pass, and then we would have to, to vote oh. again on that. So. In other words, I can say, can we, I make a move that we reconsider this? Is that what you want me to say? <laughs> well, that if, yeah. if you'd like to That's change your I, vote, yes. then we would yes. have to pass okay. the, the motion to reconsider, and then we would have to re-vote on the amendment. It sounds like there would be no change in the outcome of the amendment right. either way. All right. All right. We have a main motion before us, which is the budget. Any further discussion on that? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. Mr. Lake? Yes. Ms. White? Yes. Ms. Martin? Okay, what are we voting on? The budget as presented by Mr. Hester. No. Okay, Mr. Comstock. Aye. Mr. Hester. Yes. Mr. Adkins. Yes. The chair votes no, the budget passes. We have no other items before us. Mr. Comstock. Move to adjourn. All right, is there a second? Second. All in favor of adjourning, seeing if I was saying aye. 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 All right, we are adjourned, thank you.
Hello, I'm Jim Angelo, Assistant Superintendent for Instruction in Frederick County Public Schools. Welcome to our annual art showcase, where we celebrate the innovation, creativity, and critical thinking our students display through their works of art. Although presented differently this year, we are proud to continue the over 30-year tradition of celebrating the arts by displaying student artwork throughout the Frederick County Public Schools Administration Building. We want to thank everyone involved in making this art show a reality especially our art teachers who support, guide, and empower our students as they experiment, learn, and grow as artists. And of course, our young artists themselves. The author and speaker, Seth Godin, said, art isn't a result, it's a journey. We are pleased to share our students' journeys in our building and invite you on a virtual journey of your own as you enjoy a display of students' talents. Thank you for your support of the arts in Frederick County. Enjoy the show.